let's continue with the second part of the lecture. Uh, we're going to talk about area stress functions here. Let's start with uh, cylindrical stresses. We've already seen that we can write sigma rr, sigma theta theta, and sigma r theta as a function of sigma xx, sigma yy, and sigma xy. And we also know that from area stress function phi, we can uh, write sigma xx, sigma yy, and sigma xy, and also sigma zz as a um, function of partial derivatives of phi. So basically, the area stress function, we can find uh, the stress tensor in Cartesian coordinates, x, y, z. And also, we know the uh, relation between the stresses in cylindrical coordinates, r, theta, z, with respect to the stresses in Cartesian coordinates, sigma, x, y, z. Okay. Um, for simplicity, let's assume we don't have any body forces, so we neglect V here, and uh, our job is as simple as substituting um, sigma xx, yy, xy, and zz as a function of phi into our cylindrical stress relation. We now express the cylindrical stresses in terms of the area stress function phi. And we end up with this relation. You see that this time sigma rr, theta theta, r theta, and zz are defined as partial derivatives of the area function, the area stress function phi with respect to a still x, y, and z, the Cartesian coordinates. So uh, we have to write the stress function phi in cylindrical coordinates. We um, have already seen uh, partial um, derivatives with respect to Cartesian coordinates can be expressed uh, in terms of partial derivatives in cylindrical coordinates and r and theta. So uh, we basically try to write a partial derivative of our stress function phi with respect to x, y, and z this time with respect to r and theta using these relations. But pay attention that we have two times uh, differentiation with respect to x, for example, in this case. So we have to uh, implement partial partial x, uh, basically uh, with respect to r and theta, basically this relation, twice, as you can see here. So um, we do partial uh, phi partial x once, we get this relation the second time it gets more complicated and um, we can um, a bit simplify it like this these are mathematics um, this is a this is not a mathematic uh, course uh, so I basically uh, won't go through all of the details you're gonna uh, see the details if you're interested in the lecture hand notes but it's absolutely not necessary to uh, to understand it, go through the details, try to redrive it, whatever. It's there only for your um, personal curiosity via. So basically, uh, we do the same for the other derivatives, uh, par uh, phi partial y y and phi partial x y and just see the lecture notes for uh, all of these um, deriva uh, derivations. Finally, by combining the equations from previous slides and simplifications, we write the cylindrical stresses in terms of phi, uh, uh, meaning that uh, the uh, stresses are entirely in cylindrical coordinates. And we get uh, to these very simple equations. So it's a, a bit complex to get uh, to these, but as soon as we do all of the substitutions and simplifications, it gets uh, 
as simple as uh, you see here. The next thing we have to deal with is compatibility equation. For compatibility equation, delta 4 um, of phi, we basically break it to uh, twice um, using delta 2. And just as a hint, um, have this relation for delta 2 in cylindrical coordinates. So basically, uh, delta 2 opera uh, operator in cylindrical coordinates um, gives you a partial RR plus 1 divided by R multiplied by partial R plus 1 divided by R square uh, partial theta theta. And we have to do that twice. So basically, this is once. Uh, implementing a, a delta 2 operator and this is the second time that we implement delta 2 operator you see basically this is the second partial derivative with respect to r you see it here this is uh, 1 divided by r multiplied by the multiple uh, by um, partial derivative with respect to r and here 1 divided by r square uh, second um, partial derivative or twice uh, taking the partial derivative with respect to theta here and here uh, it is once already uh, implemented on phi okay these equations are a bit hard to uh, work with also uh, for most of um, our problems uh, we may benefit from a property called axis symmetry axis symmetry means we uh, our geometry our cross-section is symmetric around uh, Z axis so basically the loading and the cross-section is symmetric with respect to Z axis as a result uh, the stress and a strain and displacement uh, are not a function of theta they don't depend on theta so in these equations the only terms that uh, remain um, are the terms that are a function of R and any term that's a function of theta basically drops since um, our stress um, is not a function of theta anymore our stress function Phi um, would not be a function of theta as well so all of partial derivatives with respect to theta um, will drop as well so we don't get any term as a function of theta and also uh, we don't get any partial derivative with respect to theta so basically you see that uh, partial derivatives with respect to theta are now dropped just pay attention uh, sigma theta theta is the stress uh, tangent to uh, or basically tangent to the circle or uh, perpendicular to mm, the ra uh, radial direction um, it won't be a function of theta but it still we have it so axis symmetry doesn't mean that we don't get any stress um, in the tangent direction but actually we get a stress in the tangent direction but it would be only a function of r okay let's work out a compatibility equation in the case of uh, axis symmetric stress um, I'm gonna implement um, two times um, partial derivative with respect to r on um, first phi comma rr we end up with phi comma rrr four times partial derivative with respect to um, r and then i'm going to implement it on phi comma r divided by r um, let's implement it once and um, we get
minus 1 divided by r square for uh, taking the partial derivative of 1 divided by r multiply by phi comma r plus this time taking the derivative of uh, phi comma r with respect to r we get uh, phi comma r r now uh, I'm gonna implement partial partial r divided by r first on uh, phi comma r r I end up with 1 divided by r phi comma r r r three times differentiation with respect to r and also I'm going to implement that on phi comma r divided by r and I'm gonna end up with 1 divided by r partial partial r 1 divided by r phi comma r okay I keep that I'm gonna um, we're gonna see why um, so uh, let's work out the second partial derivative here with respect to r uh, we had phi comma r r r uh, we get 2 multiply by 1 divided by r to the power of 3 for implementation of partial derivative with respect to r on minus 1 divided by r square minus 1 divided by r square for implementation of uh, partial partial r on 1 divided by r here phi comma r r and then we have minus 1 divided by r square phi comma r r for implementing partial uh, derivative with respect to r on phi comma r and second time we have 1 divided by r multiplied by phi comma r r r from um, implementation of um, partial derivative with respect to r this time on phi comma r r okay um, I keep the term 1 divided by r phi comma r r r uh, the next term and I'm uh, gonna work out this term 1 divided by r multiply by partial partial r of 1 divided by r phi comma r and it gives me partial uh, partial r once implemented at 1 divided by r I get uh, 1 divided by r multiply by minus 1 divided by r square phi comma r and once I implement partial partial r on phi comma r and I get 1 divided by r phi comma r r okay now let's uh, cancel some of uh, terms together. You may notice that uh, the minus one divided by r square phi comma r r is uh, gonna uh, be cancel uh, is is gonna cancel um, with one divided by r phi comma r r here and uh, basically collecting all the other terms we end up with phi comma r r r r plus 2 divided by r phi comma r r r 3 times minus 1 divided by r 3 
oops, sorry, uh, minus 1 divided by r square. Phi comma r r plus one divided by r to the power of three phi comma r. Okay, just pay attention that um, we have phi comma r divided by r to the power of three here. Also, we get it. Uh, we get minus one from here. Uh, that's where we got we got phi comma r divided by r to the power of three. Um, also, um, the other um, remaining term is uh, two divided by r multiplied by phi comma r r r. From here. And um, also, again, uh, we had one divided by r square comma r r here, which appear to uh, basically here. Okay. Um, that's uh, how it would look. In the next slide, uh, we're going to put it in a uh, better shape. Okay, as a result, for axisymmetric uh, problems, we end up with a simple uh, set of equations like this. Sigma r r equal to 1 r. Um, phi par, uh, comma r sigma theta theta phi comma r r um, sigma r theta equal to zero and sigma z z uh, equal to nu um, phi comma r divided by r plus phi comma r r and uh, for compatibility equations uh, delta 2 operator reduces to uh, 1 divided by r multiply by partial partial r of r multiply by partial partial r and this is basically two times uh, implementing uh, delta 2 operator so um, it is basically One over R. So um, let's say it like this. So this is our delta two operator of uh, 